Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, yeah. So I recently encountered this theorem, and I find it's interesting. So I want to make a small re video and record it. So uh, this is tightly related to the Dirichlet approximation theorem. So uh, so let me just quickly recall. If you haven't seen this, you can check out my other videos that uh, I give the proof. So uh, basically, the idea is that if let's say alpha is generally irrational. So if alpha is irrational. And uh, so the Richard approach main theorem tells you that uh, you can find uh, lots of PQ where PQ is irrational. So basically, you want to use a rational to approximate irrational, uh, such that in the infinite PQ, such that alpha minus P divided by Q is always less than 1 over Q squared. Well, and I think there is a, a very interesting square root of 5 here, which is called Hurwitz theorem. And, and I will prove maybe in the future. So basically, this Richard's theorem. Dirichlet approximate theorem say that, uh, uh, for example, uh, given a irrational, that you can always use PQ, right? You can use always use a rational uh, PQ. So the standard example is very interesting. The square root of two, uh, right? So first one is you can approximate by three divided by two, and uh, and then you can easily see this. This is a Pell's equation. You get two square minus three equals to one. And I think next one should be. Uh, should be what? I think you can find the next one. I think it's five divided by uh, seven divided by five. But you know, you can check this satisfied. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry, this is not true. This should be three square minus two times two square is one. And uh, this equation you can see if you plug, you get seven square minus two divided by five square is minus one. And you can find the next. So the, you can see that this five is three plus two, right? You get 12. So this seven plus five is 12. And then the numerator should be five plus two. Uh, so it should be, let's see. So it should be 17. So I think 17, how 17 come from? Uh, I remember there is a rule. So, um, yeah, so the numerator should be, the denominator should be uh five plus seven. Oh, okay. And then you just add the numerator again. Okay. So basically what I'm saying is that you can start from x and y and then back to like x plus y and then x plus two y. Okay, and then you can check this satisfy the 17 square minus two times twelve square. So it's this is two hundred and eighty-nine, two four four is one. So it's just one to one one four four. So it's one. Oh, then you keep going, then you can see this is called, called Pell equation, Pell's equation. So you get x squared minus 2y squared equals to 1. And then xy goes to very large, that you prove that x divided by y will approach to a square root of 2. Okay, so this is a very simple example. But then there's another theorem, uh, which is like the converse sum. So it's like, so basically this tells you that you get a lower bound of the lower bound of the uh, you get you get the you get this upper bound upper bound of this approximation, but there should be a lower bound, right? Because your alpha is irrational, right? So sh there should be always a bound if you get right if you at some particular region. Okay, so this is the Lubanier. Uh, okay, so sorry, I always spell it wrong. So Lubanier's approximation theorem. So this is like a lower bound of, should be a lower bound. Okay, so let me just quickly say it. So theorem says that if alpha be the algebraic number, so let's be algebraic number. So algebraic number basically means that uh, alpha satisfies some uh, polynomial, some irreducible polynomial over, uh, over there's a over Q, okay? So there is a rational polynomial such that alpha is a root. Uh, that rational polynomial cannot be zero. Okay, and the degree n greater or equal to two. Okay, so this algebra number, not necessarily algebra integer, right? Algebra integer need to satisfy the monic polynomial. But algebra number can be just there is an equation, right? There is a point, a uh, rational equation non zero such that alpha is a root. And uh, then there is a c, where is a constant depend on alpha, such that uh. For any p q belongs to all integer, uh, we have alpha minus p divided by q. Right, there is a bound on q, 
which are equal to one over Q to the N. Okay, so this is interesting uh, results, right? This is like the the different sides of the the Dirichlet theorem. Okay, and the proof is very amazing. Okay, uh, so important is that algebra number, right? So there's a counterpart of that uh, counterpart that if if you if you you can find a number which don't satisfy the theorem, that means that alpha is not algebraic, must be transcendental. So this is the why the how the Duvernier can come uh, come up with this uh, transcendental number. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you can spend a little bit time understand it. So proof. A proof very simple, right? Because we can assume that we have x f of x. We see one, we see two, up c and x n. They say an f alpha zero. Okay, and the uh, n is greater or equal to two, and uh, f is let's assume f is irreducible over q. Irreducible over Q. Okay. And uh, so let's say we pick any PQ, right? Let's say any PQ, or I can do P divided by Q. And uh, right, and I take absolute value. So this always gives me the CK, P, Q, K, K from 0 to N. And uh, this is like 1 over N, Q to N, or K from 0 to N. C K P K Q and minus K. So let's take absolute value. And uh okay. At least it is just the take out basically take out all the numerate denominator and collect them. And obviously that this is some integer, right? And this guy cannot be zero because f is irreducible over q, so there should be no rational roots. So greater than one over q to n. Okay. So our goal is to our goal is to compute alpha minus right alpha minus p divided by q. So what we need to know is that what we need to use the mean value theorem because hopefully you can see this right because what we gonna to use this. So this guy times something, some eta. So eta should be like go from alpha p divided by q from this region or converse or basically or or p divided by q alpha and the by mean value theorem. This guy will equals to f alpha minus f p divided by q. Okay, so let's use so this is using using the MVP mean value theorem. So so what we have is that uh, this guy is zero, right? Because we are assuming that f alpha is zero, and uh, okay, so what we have is very simple. We know that uh, alpha minus p divided by q is is what. Okay. Okay. So uh so we know that alpha divide minus p divided by q is equals to fp divided by q divided by f derivative. Okay. So let's see is f p divided by q absolute value divided by f derivative. Okay, and then this guy is greater or equal to q to the n, right? Because we proved that the fp divided by q is greater or equal to one over q to the n, so this this derivative. Okay, and uh, obviously that this derivative cannot be zero, or maybe zero, right? Who knows, right? But but what? But we know that uh, but we know that f prime of alpha must be non-zero, right? Because we know that alpha. Man, cannot be the multiple roots, right? Otherwise, that uh, f is not reducible. So that means f and s alpha point that f prime of alpha is not zero. And we know that this guy is a continuous function. f prime is a continuous function. So that uh, there must be some region. There must be inside a small region. Right? There must be some small region such that f derivative is not zero. Okay. So I can find a region such that uh, f prime of alpha less uh, greater uh, derivative. I can find a region such that uh, this derivative is at most two f prime of alpha. Okay, so I just make q large enough. I can make q large enough, right? So p divided by q will large will small enough, and I get the uh, will close to alpha enough such that two divided by such that this is true. Okay, so now we can collect our results. So we get alpha. Minus p divided by q greater or equal to what? Two to the q to the n, and the f prime of alpha. Okay, 
and uh so what we need to do right we can just choose see choose our constant so we need we want to choose this to be something like this right so we can choose constant to be the to be the minimum of this to negative two minus uh one over two and the uh, prime of alpha inverse and uh, all the rest all the finite cube right there so this holds for q greater or equal to q zero so i can just pick up all the finite q zero right so i can i can just take the q n alpha minus p divided by q for all q less than q zero okay so this is the proof. So proof is very simple, right? We just pick up the mean value of zero and then collect collect everything. Okay. So uh from this that we can construct a Luvenier a Luvenier uh transcendental number. Okay. Okay. So the proof idea is similar. We need basically we need to show that. So we need we, we so basically we want to show. I I want to find some number x, define some number x, right, such that uh, the previous linear approximation theorem is false. So basically, is false means that what? Means that uh, right. So basically, you give an n, and uh, you give an n, right, and the uh, where and uh, you always, right, you can always find the pq, right. Give an n, we so basically we want to show that given n. There is always a is this the PQ such that X minus P divided by Q is violate this theorem, right? So we need less than Q divided by N. Or basically or less than some constant, right? But it's using one divided by Q to N would be will be safe enough. Will be safe enough. Mm. Okay. And uh Okay, so let's let's uh construct such a number. Okay, so uh so there are many ways to do this, but the standard I think one example is this. You you can so n factorials on the exponent. I think you can also replace by like one divided by two n factorial. It's the same as this x. Okay, so obviously that uh, x is converged, and uh, y because one divided by n factorial is less or equal to one divided by ten to the m. So by the convert dominant convergence theorem, x converge. Okay, so my claim is that uh, x is transcendental. Okay, so idea is that it's a fixed capital N large. It's fixed, first fixed capital N to be large, and let's say small n greater than capital N. Is I write Pn divided by Qn to be let's see let's take it a partial sum. Okay, obviously that Pn square Pn greater than, than zero, right? Obviously, and the Qn greater than zero because the right hand side is zero. Okay. Mm. Okay. So this means what? So from here, right, from here that we know, we know what? We know Pn divided by Qn is this one divided by 10 to n factorial and then from one to n, right? This this give, give me one fact, which is that, uh, which gives me one fact, right? Because I can collect, I can collect all the term on the right-hand side, right? <laughs> so this tell me that, and uh, reduce this to be Pn divided by Qn. So this tells me that Q must less equal to 10 to the n factorial. Because the the I can collect all the denominator, denominator term and the collect them. And then there will be maybe some some factor which I can cancel from numerator and denominator. So uh Q1 should be less than you to take factorial. Okay, but if this is true, then x minus Pn divided by Qn will be m greater than n, one over m factorial. And then we know it's definitely greater than zero. Why? Uh, okay. So let's, yeah, sure, sure, right? Because these guys greater equal to zero, and factorial, and I can write it as one divided by n ten n plus one factorial, one plus one n plus two plus 
uh, 10 of n plus 2, n plus 3, and keep going. And obviously, this is less than equal to 1 divided by 10 n factor real to the exponent. And uh, this guy is less. Obviously, this is less than the geometry series. So you can take to this. And I can change this to be 2 divided by 10 to the n factorial times n plus 1. Okay, and then less than 2 divided by qn n plus 1. That's equal to 2 divided by q capital N, capital uh, small n, capital N. Okay, so this, the final this line is basically q and less or equal to 10 to n factorial. And uh, this is less than 2 divided by Right, so this guy is simple and uh, this guy is simple, right? Because I can fix, because my assumption is that uh, small n is greater than capital N. Okay, so what this means, what this mean what? What this mean now x equals to pn minus qn can be always less than 2 divided by qn to the capital N, right? But capital N can be arbitrarily large, right? So capital N can be arbitrarily large. Then this proof is results, right? Because capital N can be arbitrarily large. So this violates. So this proof that given you given me N, right? Let's say you give me capital N, then I can I already construct P N divided by Q N such that, that this is true. And P N divided by Q N is just the partial sum of the previous like N terms. Okay, so you can play around with it, right? Uh, write down a thing carefully. But basically, once we prove this, right, this is the partial sum. So proof very simple, right? You given give, give me capital N, and I say that oh, this P N divided by Q is a good way, right? So this guy will bound it by this guy, okay? And then their factor over two is not important, okay? So uh, this proof the transcendental number, and also tell you guys the this Duvernier approximation theorem, and I hope you guys subscribe to my channel.